Hi, this is Jeff, and this is a video on using the quiz tool in Moodle, and I'm going to discuss some more sophisticated strategies for making your question categories and using them to build quizzes. In an earlier video, Jason showed you how to create categories and populate them with questions, and he advocated a system where you just make one category per quiz, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that approach. Especially the first time you make quizzes for a course, that might be exactly what you want to do. And depending on how you use the quizzes, and also depending on the structure of your courses, that may be good enough and you might never need to do anything more complicated. But what I'm going to show you is a more complicated way that I find very useful in my courses, and you may also find it useful. In the very first video of this series, I talked about this issue of shuffling questions and their answers and making sure each student gets different questions so that the students can't just copy the answers from each other. And I pointed out you want those different questions as much as possible to be interchangeable using the same concepts and skills and so on. And I'll just point out that you may have several things you want to test in the quiz. And you might want to ensure that every student gets tested on each of those things. So if you just make a category for the quiz, you can't guarantee that each student will see a question on each topic that you're trying to test. And so you may need several categories for the quiz, where you have a number of different types of questions, and you want each student to see each of those types on their quiz, and so you create a set of categories to cover those. And I just want to point out as well that this is directly related to your planning of objectives and formative assessment. So for example, as I talked about in my unit on objectives and assessment, you may have identified some high level topic objective and it's unrealistic to expect that students will immediately be able to achieve that high level objective. And so you might have identified a number of associated lower level objectives. And then you use formative assessment to walk them through these lower levels. Well, a quiz is a perfect place to deal with low level formative assessment. So within some topic of your course, you may have identified a number of high-level objectives, and each of those high-level objectives may be connected with some lower-level objectives which you wish to do some formative assessment of. And so now it makes sense just to make a set of categories in your quiz database which will correspond to each of these low-level objectives. So here's an example from one of my classes. This is from a calculus course. And you're looking at a quiz, and you can see that it has four questions. And the first is a random question from a topic just called antiderivatives. So that's a category in my database. And similarly, here's another category in my database, and so on. So each question is drawn from a different category in my questions database. And so each student is going to get one question from each of these categories. And just while you're looking at this, I want to point out something about communicating objectives to students. This document over here on the right side of the screen is a list of readings for the students to do. And in particular, it has questions that I say they ought to be able to answer to tell them when they're done the reading. And more or less what I'm doing is providing them a list of low-level objectives. I haven't phrased them that way, but that's basically what they are. And they correspond fairly closely with the questions on the quiz. So this one is connected with this quiz question, and actually this one sort of is two. And then this one and this one are related to these two, and so on and so forth. And I often hear the complaint from professors about students saying, is this going to be on the final exam? I almost never get that question from students, and it's probably documents like this where I lay out my expectations that are the reason why. 